This is the magnetic separator that I'm helping a friend patent. And here's some material that I separated. This is the non-magnetic. There's the wand or baton. And most people call it a swarf. Swarf. And what makes this one different is it has a rotating magnet and it has some special magnets. Now, not just like strong rare earth, but they have a certain pole to them, as in the North and South Pole. Here's some material that I have sucked up out of a bunch of cleanups with this little bit of black sand and I haven't done the final cleanup yet. And just panning. Actually, that's the black sands I panned it out of by hand. And I showed some pictures on the internet of the black sand that gold I got out of this and I actually have put it in here um, I'm gonna show you really briefly how this works differently than most magnetic separators that just trap the, the magnetic sands and clump them together and trap the gold in with it that's why I'm not a fan of magnetic separators but I I think I'm gonna use this one <laughs> okay So here's some gold, and some black sands like I mentioned, and I'm going to go ahead and put the rod in it and pull the black sands out. And what we're going to see, we're going to see that uh, gold gets trapped in there with it. Okay, pretty powerful magnet, and we're going to see how the gold is trapped by removing this pan and now in the water spinning the magnet by hand I could hook it to a drill and <laughs> do way better because you know we're going 100 RPMs as opposed to thousands I mean a, a one RPM a minute or three four like I'm doing now see now the, the a normal magnet does not do uh, a good a job because it's pulled differently. And this pulls in a way that it flips and rotates and spins the magnetic material. Pretty heavy. And as you can see, just picking the gold up from that distance, look how big the gold is. I mean, that's big gold to be trapped in a magnet because magnets do that. They trap the gold, sandwich it in between the material. Now, of course, with the baton, we extract the end and pull the black sands out but I'm gonna work that just a little bit more to get the fine gold out of there because it's supposed to go with a drill bit and I'm gonna do that here in a second but as you can see now my gold is pretty clean there's in there's some um, uh, hardly any black sands it took it all out there's probably some lead and some other crap in there but anyways so trapping black sands and trapping gold come right along with each other unless you have a magnet that works and isn't stationary like this one is and that's what basically the whole patent's about everybody's got them buckets of black sands that are unprocessed or processed once waiting to be processed over and over again uh, so already gone through uh, final concentrates that I panned out with black sands in them that I'm going to dump in this bucket. This is dry. This is how he prefers to do it. The inventor of the mechanism. As you can see, there's a lot of black sand in there. I am going to put the rod on the end of the drill bit, stick it in the bucket here. He does it on a flat table. And I'm going to process the black sands out of this. And then I am going to pan the black the uh, 
non-metallic and see the gold that drops out because of the... Mm, the gold is not competing with the black sands in your pan, so it's very easy to get the gold out. As in the pictures that were provided a little while ago on the internet. What I'm interested in is ejecting the gold. I'm not interested, you know. And so I'm going to work it a little bit more than I guess some people would. But, you know, I'm just kind of waiting until stuff stops flying off. I can see it kind of hitting the, you probably can't, in the video. See it hitting the side of the, the bucket. And I would wear safety glasses. And also, this is a rare earth magnet. It's about as strong as you could buy in the market without electrifying it and making an electromagnet. Um, so, pacemakers, you know, other sort of things you may have in your body that have metal. Cell phones, computers. Not a good idea to get them close. So, they're easily grabbed almost all the material. But some materials denser than others, which are not denser, sorry, more magnetic than others. Um, just because some is more pure. The material's pure, iron, and you know there's rocks that don't even look like they're iron, they're like white, red, blue, that still have magnetic properties to them and stick. So, um, what's really going on, you know, This is just a prototype, the first real one, of course. Gorgeous, you know, it's this is just a test of theory. In a ma. What's happening is every time it spins, the more pure material makes it to the to center and touches, or the rod face. And the other the other stuff that's competing has to go out, along with, of course. Uh, non-magnetic material gets worked out. So it, this is actually a magnetic properties are, are being um, uh, exploited here. Correctly, I feel. Now because the... I'm going to help this out a little bit. Got my hand on the... there. A lot of black sands in there. Normally there is. When you get to the point where your material has been processed and such. Get that gold out of there. And of course, magnetic material in the pan. I'm going to pan that out. Here's the magnetic material in the bucket here. It's separated. And I'll go ahead and pan this out and we'll take a look at the goal, hopefully, that we find.
that I missed from panning with the black sands in it. One thing I noticed about this material in this creek that I was panning a lot and as I was panning and I would uh, get a good uh, you know amount of material to come to slough off that the gold was riding on top of the black sands and was stratified throughout it and I think a lot of that is because just the it's so flat in the gold's flat and it's just small and it, it its surface tension is just so great compared to its total weight or its mass not density but mass that um uh, it just can't get through the black sand so you, you you struggle it doesn't settle and and so it's competing with that so now I got all this non-magnetic material which hopefully is you know the stuff that I just suck at panning and getting out um, that's still kind of heavy. Dump off some water. So you saw me shift my little fakey panning job that everybody was laughing at on video. And I got that much gold out of it. So and there's some fine pieces there. And I will pan this out properly and post a picture of what's in here. A still picture, but I'm running out of memory on my phone. And my boy is bored. He's trying to reach in there and poke the material. Because he wants to go play, so that's way more important. So we're we're getting ready to blow this popsicle stand, as one might say. Yeah, see, he's testing the material. What do you think of the material, Reed? Does it look good? Uh-huh. Is there gold in it? Uh-huh. Lots? Uh-huh. Well, I sure help. Glad you're putting that dirty material back up there for me. All right. Catch you guys later. Bye. material that I panned out. There's the magnetic material I pulled out of it. Here's the gold that I got out of it from that easy panning. Not a lot, but there's some pretty fine stuff in there. If I could get the camera just to keep coming in. But it kind of stops when it's that really speckly stuff that's built up right on the very edge. But I think it works pretty good. Saves you some time in panning, final panning, um, if you're removing by hand. You know, I think it's going to work pretty good. And what's really nice is it's going to be, actually this was an application we were going to apply to uh, some industrial size sluice equipment first, but of course that takes too much money, so we had to grab the low-hanging fruit, which is the wand, the swarf. So that's kind of what this thing does, you know, it just saves you some time separating your material so you can pan it out. Awesome!